Hello and good evening. This is Julie Barkas, and I'd like to give you a big warm welcome to the Child Care Business Success Show. This is episode number five, and I am so absolutely thrilled to be here with you this evening. And as promised, we've got another special friend joining me tonight to really help you take your child care business and your life to a whole other level. And of course, we've got prize giveaways, and we've got a winner from last week to announce as well. So if you're here joining us, I'd love to have this be as interactive as possible. So please say hello. And whether you're tuning into the live broadcast or the replay of this, I do come back and read comments. And I also encourage my guests to read the comments as well and reply to you. So please say hello to me. Let me know where you're tuning in from and how the weather is for you today. It's been absolutely gorgeous here in Chicagoland. So I hope that you've been enjoying some spectacular weather as well. So, hey, Loretta's here. Oh, let's see what Loretta has to say. So, Loretta's our chief of happiness, and she'll be joining us in just a little bit to announce some prize giveaways and, well, actually, our prize winner from last week. So, Loretta, nice to have you here. And uh, if you're tuning in, please feel free to say hello, and we'll let some people jump on with us live before we really kick the topic into high gear. Now, this show is being broadcast on a couple of our Facebook pages, our public page, as well as our group page. If you're tuning in on the group page, please know that you cannot share from there because it is a closed group. So you could go to the business page, just type in Child Care Business Success if you're not part of that page, or click on my name and it'll take you right over there, and you could share the show from there because tonight's topic is, is a huge one. It's about overwhelm, it's about procrastination. And I know from conversations with many of you, this is a topic that you will so benefit from. Now also, if you're not yet part of our free and closed group, I wanna invite you to come on over there and Loretta or Donna will pop in the link for you. And I have a special gift. And what I did is I created a little reference sheet. I'll hold it up here, I don't know how well you could see it. But I created a reference sheet for you so that you could print these out. And with every single show that we do, you can write down your ahas, your takeaways, and your actionable items. You could also write down our prize giveaways and uh, who you could share the show with. So it's a reference sheet, and we're going to be posting this for you. And, John, if you're on with me, if you could go to uh, the graphic art program that we use for training certificates. There's a sheet there that you can download and then post that in our members page so that everybody uh, who's tuning in can access this and use it this evening to take notes with. All right, so who's on with us? Say hello. I see more and more viewers tuning in. If you're here, say hello, and then we're gonna get into some juicy content, but you know I thrive on interaction. So the more we hear from you, the more juicy nuggets you're going to be getting from us. So very exciting. There you go. Thanks, Jonna. Jonna's going to grab that sheet for you and post it in the group page. So if you're not a part of the free group page. Oh, and another prize giveaway that we're going to do this evening. We're going to continue this on. If you are tuning in, I encourage you to share this. And have people let them know, hey, Julie's on live with the Child Care Business Success Show. Come here and post your name in the comment section. And whoever gets the most people writing their name in the comment section is going to get two tickets to my event, the Create Your Dream Team Experience. And the next one's coming up in October in Boston. So it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. And I know you don't want to miss it. All right. Who do we have saying hello? All right. Good. Brittany. Hey, Brittany. Nice to see you here. Thrilled to have you. And who else do we have? Christine. Nice to see you here. Loretta says, hey, Brittany. All right. And one of the reasons we're doing this is really to create engagement for our community. So again, we want that interaction and we want you to say hello to me. And uh, also, you know, what questions do you have about overwhelm and procrastination? And how many of you, and you could let me know that, yep, that's me. How many of you tend to procrastinate? And how many of you operate most of the time in the mode of overwhelm. Anyone? If that's you, please say, yep, that's me. I can totally re relate. Get onto the content, Julie. All right. So I think I announced the prizes. So in the group page, we've got our reference sheet. Make sure you grab that. Also share this out. So go to the groups that you're part of and let them know that we are on live and that they should come here. Give them the link. 
Tune in and put your name in the comments. Whoever gets the most names posted is going to get two tickets to come to my next Create Your Dream Team experience. And uh, any other prizes I have? I'll probably announce some more. All right, who else is here? That's me. All right, Christine says, yep, she can relate to that. All right, fantastic. All right, we're getting more and more folks jumping on with us. What else? Hey, let's uh, bring Loretta on. Loretta, you want to announce? Maybe that'll be fun to announce the, the prize winner from last week while we're waiting for folks to jump on with us. All right, I'm going to add Loretta on with me. So this is Loretta Chop, our chief of happiness. Loretta, you are looking absolutely beautiful tonight. Thank you very much. You're also stunning as always. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, this is a great topic that we have lined up this evening. Do you think a lot of our folks can relate to procrastination and overwhelm? I think that it is a very relevant topic. I think we can all fall into those traps easily. Having the yeah, especially in, in child care. I mean, let's let's think about some of the challenges. And I know in the group pages, we've asked people, hey, how many of you get into overwhelm and feel like, you know, you easily slip into procrastination? I remember reading some of the responses. I don't know if you looked at them, <laughs> but a couple of people said, that's me. And I don't really know how to get out of the mode of overwhelm. So it seems like every single day just becomes a backing up of more overwhelm and more overwhelm and more overwhelm on top of that. And uh, have you seen that a lot in the industry with either yourself or with the teachers you work with? Absolutely. I can see as just in general, we'll save the things that we're not as comfortable with or not as confident in, and they start to pile up. And all of a sudden, you just don't know where to start and begin to tackle those things. And that's when those feelings kind of just crash in and you're going, oh my goodness, I'm never gonna get it done. Let's not even try. I'll just do something that's fun, like go read a book with the kids. And then, you, I mean, it's so easy to fall into that trap. Right, you know, and then once you start feeling that overwhelm and you just feel like sometimes curling up into a ball and saying, you know, why even dig into this? Because what difference mm -hmm. is it gonna make? And I tell you what, my friend who I invited here to be on this evening's show with us, Samantha Bennett, her book, a couple of things really grabbed me in there. So I can't wait to share some of these strategies with everybody. And I've been studying performance and productivity for mm, a good 30 years. And I've taken a lot of different courses on it. And I teach a lot on it. But she's really presented some strategies in her book. Uh, what was one on the Get It Done? or where, what's, get it done. <laughs> and uh, she's got two books. So get it done and start right where you're at. And if I'm saying those wrong, she'll correct me. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I know Sam as well when I bring her on. But there was a couple things that she said that I was like, wow, those are really good. And one thing I love about Samantha is that she wrote these books for artists, for real creative souls. And that's who I consider myself to be. Do you consider yourself to be the creative type, Loretta? Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, it's yes, we're business owners. Yes. We're directors, yes, we're leaders, but this is a very creative industry. And there are so many clients who we have in this group who are dancers or musicians or like yourself, Loretta, a singer, um, a do-it-yourselfer, which is you, <laughs> right? Uh, an essential oil person, real creative with like finding those right scents. But we're all looking for that artistic expression. And uh that's where we get overwhelmed because there's so many ideas going on in our head about what we want to do and what we should do. And what do we do first? What do we tackle first? Mm -hmm. So that's what tonight's all about. So if you feel that you're going to benefit from this, type in oh yeah in the comments. And in the interim, we're going to hear who our prize winner is from last week. So last week we made the same offer. We said, hey, go and post in some of the groups that you're a part of. Let them know we're on live here with Julie Barkas and the Child Care Business Success Show. And whoever gets the person or somebody or people writing the most comments or their name in the comments, the most time wins to event tickets. So we did that and we have one winner to announce. And I don't know, Loretta, do we need a drum roll? Always. We always need a drum roll. <laughs> All right. I'll do a drum roll. Okay, here we go. So we're going to announce the winner. And if you're listening in live, go ahead. You can do a drum roll with me. The winner of two tickets. Two tickets. Event. Two tickets. It's so exciting. Is Joni Downey. 
Ooh, Joni Downey. So Joni, congratulations. I'm sure she's doing a happy dance right now. <laughs> Is she? Yeah. Well, I'm doing one for her. Because <laughs> I know Joni and I think she's going to really uh, enjoy those tickets and she can come out, come on out and join us. So we've got more and more folks tuning in. I love seeing all the comments going. All right. Cool. And uh, we'll have to give away brownies. Should we do it the same way we did it last week for engagement? And then we'll have you come back on at the end of the show. I will be paying very close attention to the comments and who's engaging and asking questions and commenting, and then I can announce someone at the end. Okay, so so this is another prize opportunity because we're so passionately um, excited about giving you free stuff, uh, you know, and the best brownies in the world. And it's funny, clients will send me emails now and they say, well, Julie, I think that's worth some brownies, don't you think? <laughs> so people are really into these brownies, but... If you want some of the best brownies in the world, you just have to be one of, or actually the most engaged person here. And Loretta is not going to keep specific count, but your name will keep coming up and she'll see that. She'll go, oh yeah, this week's winner is this person. And she'll come back at the end of the show and let us know who's going to get the world's best brownies to enjoy sometime in the very near future. Sound good? Sounds good. I'll be watching. Woohoo. All right. So it's all about engagement. You know, and that's what our community is about and why we're doing this show. We really want you to be interactive and interact with us. All right. All right, Loretta, thank you. And I'll see you back later on to announce another prize winner. But in the interim, yay, let's give a woohoo for Joni Downey, who gets two event tickets. All right. Great job. All right. I am going to go ahead and uh, put you back in the lobby. <laughs> All right. Well, I cannot wait to bring our, our, our future guest on this evening, Samantha Bennett. So I'm going to welcome Samantha up into the room with me. And we're going to get on with some really juicy content. Hi, Samantha. Hi, Julie. Hi, everybody. Big hug to you. I gotcha. <laughs> well, I have to tell everybody that Samantha and I met during a mastermind with a mentor who we both study with. And there's actually a whole group of us several years later who still stay in contact and still use each other for support um, or for an ear when needed. And Samantha was one of those people who just stood in my, out in my mind like, oh, wow, I, I just really love what she's talking about, love what she's doing. And I remember her promoting her books and talking about her books. And I didn't pick one up until mm, just a couple weeks ago. But with our relationship, I want to tell you, when I was writing... Ta da the Child Care Business Success book. If you haven't gotten yours yet, make sure you get a copy of this. But when I was writing the Child Care Business Success book, I was struggling getting it done. And I remember reaching out to Samantha and some fellow mastermind folks saying, okay, I've really got to get this thing done, but I'm really struggling with this. And Samantha said to me, let's get on the phone. Let's get on the phone. Let's talk about it. And we got on the phone, and within about 20 minutes, my mindset was flipped to where I was like, okay, I'm going to get this done. And I forgot the specific questions that she asked me, but it was all about like, well, what's the worst thing that happens if you let the book go as it is right now and just get it out there and get it done? Will it benefit more people or will it be, you know, better if you have to be perfect about it? And you see, when I was doing this book, I'm going to be totally transparent. There were things that came up that really scared the heck out of me. There were people threatening lawsuits on me for different words or verbiage I was using on the book. And then there were other things that kept arising, whether it was somebody who we were going to include in the book, didn't want to be included. And it was like, oh, my goodness, how do I get this done? And it's a very unique book that it's based on transcripts and stories. So we're telling stories in the book of child care business success. And Sam, I owe you a big, huge thank you again. And I think we put a big, huge thank you in the book to you as well. <laughs> but, um, but a big, huge thank you for really pushing me over, so to speak, to get into that zone of uncomfort so that I could get it done. And it's just been about a year now that it's been an Amazon best-selling book. So yay. So it's done. And now I'm really excited to do the next one, but it's finding the time. So Sam, I want to start out by asking you, tell us about your journey because at some point in your life you realized hey you know what i'm procrastinating or i'm like not getting things done and i know we master what we need to know in this lifetime not only by learning it but eventually by teaching it 
And I think that's what you've done in your book, in your books, get it done and start right where you're at. And I know you've got several other publications out there, but you've done that so beautifully in your two books where you've not only mastered it in your own life and wrote about it and now you're teaching about it. And this isn't the only thing that you teach about. So it's gonna be real fascinating to hear your journey. So tell us a little bit about where it started for you. Yeah, well, first of all, just thank you so much for having me on. And I think this emphasis on community and on sharing and on being with me. I'm hearing a big bad speak on my voice. Is that from you? I don't think so. I'm hearing a little bit of an echoing. Loretta, how is she sounding to you? And maybe our audience can let us know. Can you hear Sam okay? All right, well, I'll keep talking. You tell me if I need to. Keep talking, yeah, and we'll let you know. Okay. okay. So if you can't uh -huh. hear Sam or if it's too distorted, let us know, and we'll figure out what we can do about that. So, but yes, you and I met in a mastermind, and this thing of being in community with people who are up to the same things that you are, who care about the same things you care about, and who will really challenge you to do your best and be your best, I think is one of the most important things. Because you may have noticed, not everybody in your life is super supportive <laughs> of your entrepreneurship, of the chances that you take, and of your creativity in your own business. So yay for promoting that, and, and especially for childcare workers who have the most important job of all the jobs. So, um, but I started out as an actor, right? My background's in theater. I was a kid who went to theater camp. I did shows. I went to college. Um, I actually left Northwestern University because I got offered a job at the Second City. So I worked with some of the great comic minds of our time with Steve Carell and Steve Colbert and the Everett Ellis and Ian Gomez and all those guys. Um, yeah, and in addition to working to some of them, you've been on some pretty popular TV shows too, right? Let's go yep. ahead and throw that out there for, for the folks. So what shows have you been in? I did, um, the first big thing I did when I got to LA was an episode of the Drew Carey show. I booked that Ooh. right away. Um, I did um, six weeks on Days of Our Lives. I did a show called Strong Medicine. I did um, a uh, Modern Family. So okay. yeah, so I had one of those acting careers that went well enough that you didn't want to give up on it but not so well as to actually be able to support a person. <laughs> so along the way, I just got really interested in this question of how do creative people make decisions? Like, how do you know what to do when you could do anything, right? How do you promote your childcare business when you could have a podcast? You could make YouTube videos. You could stand on the corner with a sandwich board. Like, what do you do? And there isn't a right answer right? There's no right way to do it. There's just your way to do it. So I started to get really into this idea and I started teaching a class called Get It Done. And it was me and like 12 people in a church basement in Van Nuys. And I might've been charging them $75. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's a lot of exercises and worksheets and inquiry um, because it's not like I've got some incredible method and everybody should just do things my way. What I have are sort of can openers, you know, or, or wine corks to get your creativity uncorked so that your great ideas can start flowing out and you can start doing things in a way that makes sense to you. That's fantastic. So tell me, where was the point for you where you said, I've got to put the message out there about getting it done or about just starting where you're at? <sighs> When yeah, did that hit you? Just start. Because that, that's what hit me was the title of your book. Start right where you're at. And I was yeah. like, okay, that's brilliant. Because often we want to be like, you know, 20 miles ahead of where we're at. And then we don't do anything. And oh, I know and so much don't do anything ready to for get like ready. months. <laughs> so much of the getting ready to get ready, right? Like, oh, I need to redo the website, which means I need a new picture, which means I need to lose 20 pounds for it, which means I need to find the coupon for the gym, which I can't find. So I'll just play another round of you know, farm cart, <laughs> it's a mess, <laughs> candy crush, right? Um, so yeah, I, so I was teaching that class and it was just one of a lot of things I was doing. I was doing a lot of projects and shows and producing and acting and all kinds of things. And then in early 2009, um, all the projects I was working on disappeared at the same time. You know, when God just sends you the message like, hello, guess what, right? Right. Road closed, road closed, road closed, road closed. Like, oh, apparently this is what I'm doing. And I thought, well, I wonder if I could do the organized artist company full time. And then I thought, I guess I should order business cards. 
like I knew nothing. I knew nothing about entrepreneurship. I knew nothing about running a business. I knew nothing about email marketing. I knew nothing about anything. But, um, and in some ways my ignorance was a blessing because I didn't know it was supposed to be hard. And the more I learned about marketing and sales and fell in love with marketing and sales, fell in love with storytelling, fell in love with connecting to people. Um, one of the things I was teaching was this 15 minute a day concept. And it just really resonated for people. So here's the pledge, everybody, for those of you who feel overwhelmed, who have it, this, have you noticed you get everything done for everybody else all day long and the stuff that matters most to you doesn't happen. The thing that you know would really make a difference in your life, in your business, in your career, for your family, just doesn't get done, right? So yes. whether that's a book like Julie's or you know, a prayer and meditation practice or exercise or redoing your website, whatever it is. Yes. So well, let's ask our folks for a moment. So how many of you feel like that, that you spend your entire day running around doing everything for everybody else. And then when it comes to you and what you really want to get done, there's no time left. If you could relate to that, go ahead and give us an oh yeah in the comments. I'm going to push my monitor back just a little bit here. To give me more space, I think. <laughs> but if you can relate to that, give us an oh yeah in the comments and then we'll get some more strategy or we'll start getting some strategies out there. But I love the 15 minute a day concept and idea that Sam's gonna share with us. And I think this is gonna make a huge difference in many of your lives. So let's see, we have anybody giving us an oh yeah? Hey Karen, I'd I love see Karen's here. And I'd love Sorry. to know what project you're procrastinating on. And what, what one project you're procrastinating on. Okay. All right. So here's Christine says, I do relate to that. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, what did Deidre? Deidre said something really cool down here. Let's see. Where is Deidre? Okay. Here's, here's Deidre's comment to you, Sam. Can you read that? <laughs> poetry before housework. <laughs> Love your coffee cup. Poetry before housework. <laughs> All right. I like that too. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Tudor's time says, yep. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Karen says yes every day. All right. I like to do things a little the interactive way, Sam. Totally. It's great. <laughs> All right. So continue to comment on this. And like Sam said, if there's one project you're procrastinating, what is it? And I know oftentimes in this industry, it might be just making that phone call to that parent who owes you money. It might be making a, a difficult confrontation with a staff member who you don't really want to confront about an issue. So what is the thing that you are procrastinating now? It might also be things like working out. It might also be things like, for me, <laughs> maybe doing dishes. I mean, it could just be things. And if I don't, you know, don't keep my kitchen clean, it looks like a disaster. And I have to cook all this healthy food all the time. So I'm cooking a lot more, but I don't like to keep up with the dishes. So anyways, that's a whole other story and probably a whole other, other guest who can help me with that. <laughs> but if you can relate, let us know. Procrastinating on, oh, unpacking boxes. All right. That's a good one. And then hi, Deidre. Okay. Cool. All right. So we'll let more comments flow in. I see more and more folks joining us. And if you're just tuning in, remember, we've got a prize on the table. Go share this link. Go tell the groups that you're a part of. Tune in to the Child Care Business Success Show. Here's the link. Tell them to write your name in the comments. And the person who gets the most name written here in our comments wins two event tickets. And the person with the most engagement is getting some brownies this evening. Loretta, our chief of happiness, is on standby monitoring the group to see who's going to win the yummy brownies. And also, John posted a reference sheet for you. If not already, she will be. A reference sheet for you on um, just some notes that you could keep during the shows that I created for you. So I thought you'd enjoy that. And that's available in the group page. So if you're not a member, please uh, go to the group page and uh, fill out the few questions to become a group. All right, let's see. So Christine says, uh, finish, what did she say? Finish a self, oh, finish a self-paced training. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. And Paulette, nice to see you here. She gave us a smiley face with glasses. <laughs> All right. All right. All right, Sam, let's get into some of these strategies. So what's our 15-minute technique? Well, the first thing I want to point out to y'all is that overwhelm is something that you do to you. It is not something that everybody does to you. No one can make you feel overwhelmed. You make you feel overwhelmed. 
So you have 100% control over that. That's the good news. You have 100% control over that. So no victims, no victims. No victims. The, and I think it happens mostly when, when we can't tell, when it feels like everything's coming at us with the same level of intensity. You know, like, oh, I got to do this and I got to do this. And I got to return this call and this is pinging and that's pinging and I got to do this and I got to do this. Right. So that's a question of prioritization and focus. Right. So, and these things that are the bigger projects that you know would really make a difference, reaching out to other people in the community, getting those boxes unpacked, making that time to work out, making that time to cook healthy food, doing your prayer or meditation, whatever it is that you know that really lights you up. You know, if it were done, it would really make a difference. Put a light in your eyes, spring in your step, getting the staff evaluations done right. We have the thought, I think sometimes, that like, oh, I can't spend time on that stuff. That's selfish. Right. Other people need me. This crisis needs me. These parents need me. These kids need me. My family needs me. But actually, you doing the work that matters most is the opposite of selfish. Because you want to know what's really selfish. And this is a little tough medicine, but I know you guys can take it. What's really selfish is you walking around stressed out and exhausted and underslept and underfed and undercuddled and not creatively fulfilled. And the rest of us has to deal you deal with you when you're like that and you don't have a sense of humor and you're super reactive and it's just no fun for anybody, right? Right. When you take 15 minutes a day to move forward on the stuff that you know matters most, you get lit up inside, right? There's a light in your eyes, you can listen, you have a better sense of humor, you're less reactive, um, you have better ideas. Like we love that version of you. So it may be that all these people need you, but they don't need you for the 15 minutes that you're working on the projects that matter most. So 15 minutes a day, seven days a week, before you check your email, before you check your email, before you check your email, spend 15 minutes a day on the projects that matter most to you. I swear the students and clients I have who do this see miraculous results. Yes. You know, and, and this and this is true, you know, and, and this is one of the things Sam kept saying in her book. And I listened to the audio version of Get It Done. And it was and she said it the same way. Before you check your email. Be, and I've heard it over and over and over and over again. And I really think it's like this muscle that you have to work and develop so that you can do it, especially since studies say that most of us sleep within like a foot of our cell phones and that on average, people even check their cell phones during sex. <laughs> you know, so we're so connected to the media and now it's like really getting off of it and pulling ourselves away from that addictive behavior so that we could focus on what's most important. And I know when I'm overwhelmed or I feel like procrastinating, uh, you know, sometimes it's the TV. I'm not a huge TV watcher, but it's, yeah, let's check Facebook. Let's see what's going on on social media. And then it's like, wait a second, Facebook becomes this big black hole or your email. And I once heard it said that when you look at your email first, it's like letting somebody else's agenda dictate your day. The same thing with Facebook. You've got somebody who messages you. You've got somebody who says this or a parent who's complaining about this or staff member who's, you know, has this issue going on. If you've got that line of staff members, you know, lining up at your door, you know, that's got to be your do not disturb time and say, hey, this is my time for an hour. Pretend I'm not here. I'm going to take some time to really dig into the things that will make us successful as a child care program and explain that to your staff. But I love the concept of before you check email, but it's a discipline. It's a discipline. But the good news is it's only 15 minutes, right? Because we're all super busy. But, you know, everybody's got 15 minutes. So and 15 minutes will hopscotch you right past your perfectionism, right past even how perfect are you going to make it in 15 minutes, right? And even if you don't do that well today, you're going to do it again tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the day after that. And especially for things like paperwork, which is so time consuming, uh -huh. right? Go, if you're like, if you got a messy desk, right? Because the problem with paper is you've got to read it, right? So do it with a post-it, stack of post-its, look at the thing, put a post-it on it. Jennifer summer camp. Stephen's medical bills, you know, vacation, right? So tag them so that you can see what they are the next time you look at them. Um, but anything like that, 15 minutes a day, I promise you, you will get to the bottom of it. I had a client who had two 
twin toddler boys. And so she didn't even have 15 minutes. Like she was just... <laughs> <laughs> She's in the Completely. negative zone. <laughs> She's in the negative zone. But um, she said, she said, but she started doing five minutes of decluttering a day. Five minutes and five minutes, like she would do it two or three times a day. So she would do like this much of her bookshelf, you know, half of the utensil drawer, this much, this month. And the boys would help her. She said by the end of six months, her house looked like Dwell Magazine. <laughs> well, she said awesome. her mother came over and was like, what did you do? <laughs> You know, and this and this is one of the things that really got me started when I was working in corporate America. Oh, back many moons ago, uh, it was a time when my office or my cubicle was so well insulated with paper. You know, thank goodness nobody like threw a match over my into my cubicle because it was. Just, but I made the commitment that I was just going to take five minutes before I left every single day to go through one little stack and either pitch things, put them in binders, touch that piece of paper once, put it away. And it made such a huge difference. And that really launched me into my study of performance and productivity, which is where a my fascination became like, oh, you know, because in corporate America, we had no time. We were working from like 7 a.m. until like midnight. And, um, you know, but that was a huge, huge lifesaver for me was getting the paperwork under control, getting the paper under control. So, yeah. so what do you think? Yeah, and better to have a messy desk or a clean desk? Because I know the creative are. mind can totally be messy. Yeah, it depends on who you are. I, I'm a pretty visual person. So for me, if it goes in a drawer, it dies. So <laughs> I need to create um, systems on my desk where things can be stacked, but not too but not too messy. Yes, and I have like mind maps all over my office with all the ideas and thoughts and different things so that I could see it. So it's the same thing. So, you know, and I think a good point here is don't try to conform into what somebody else is telling you because a lot of times we hear like, you have to have a clean desk and you have to do things this way. But if you are visual and you are creative, embrace who you are and find a way so that you can really see what you're working on and have it in front of you. So sometimes to me, I don't know about you, Sam, but a notebook doesn't do the trick. It's like a little notebook isn't going to cut it. I need a big, huge whiteboard or a big sheet of paper. For sure. For sure. However, however, I don't care if things are messy as long as they're in flow, right? As long if, if there are things that are stacked and stuck, that's clutter, right? So, but as long as it's in flow, it's fine. Yeah. All right. Let's hear what Deidre has to say here. We're getting some comments in. So Deidre says, love the idea of 15 minutes, much easier to carve out um, the day than one hour. Yep. So just 15 minutes. Perfect. All right, Loretta, mind maps are awesome. Yes, we've done some mind mapping. My desk is never clear. It has to flow in useful ways. Absolutely, Loretta. All right, let's see if we got anything else. All right, this is good stuff. Is there anything else that you'd like to say about the 15 minutes, Sam? Just, uh, you mentioned something that I think is really important. The, this, uh, here's another pledge you can all take with me. You can take the 15 minute a day pledge. You can also take this pledge. Get your cell phone out of the bedroom. <laughs> get your cell phone out of the bedroom. And I know people are like, oh no, I've got teenagers. It has to be out. Fine. Leave it by the door, right? Leave it on the dresser. Just get it off the nightstand. Give yourself back the gift of waking up in the morning. That moment when you're just waking up and you, you still half in dreamland and that moment to stretch and roll over and cuddle if there's somebody to cuddle with or an animal to cuddle with or get the cool side of the pillow. And that time for the overworked person, for the sensitive person, for the creative person, that's a really important time of day. And there's a number of studies that indicate that the way you spend the first couple of hours of your day has an exponential effect on the rest of your day. So giving yourself back even just a minute or two of waking up and stretching and entering the day like a civilized person, believe me, there is nothing happening on your phone that cannot wait for, for you to take 10 deep breaths and remember what you're grateful for. Mm. You know, for you to just enjoy waking up and stretching and, you know, even go, hey, do it like I do it. Take a shower and have a cup of tea before you even look, you know, do your prayer work before you, your meditation work. Like, let, don't give this control over your life. You know, that's where the overwhelm happens, right? Because this makes money off of franticness and outrage and overstimulation. And it's up to us to say, no, my morning is mine. 
I enter the day the way I want to enter the day. I carry with me the energy I want to carry. And I think especially when you're dealing with kids and their and God knows their parents, the more you can come at them with a calm, centered, straightforward energy, you know, when they know that you are in control, that you've got it, you know, that you're you're not going to get rocked off balance by something or something else. That gives everybody an enormous amount of confidence and just a place to rest, a place to feel safe. Be the play, be the person that people feel safe with. Well, you know, and it's true. And I think to model also or to cultivate the kind of culture you want, we don't want staff members using their cell phones or being tied to them. So think about how you were tied to yours. And if you are crazy tied to your cell phone, you might want to really implement this tip so that you can really model for your team what you want them to incorporate. So it's not just about saying don't use your cell phones, it's about modeling how to detach from that little device so that we can all really do the best for the kiddos in our care. Because I know so many times we try to have some really highly controlled efforts in place to get staff members off their cells. And we've done audio programs in the past about you know cell phones and dancing on tables, how to deal with inappropriate work behaviors. But modeling it is so important and not just from what they see, but from what they know is true about the lifestyle that we have. So I agree. And this is, you know, it's funny. I was walking around this morning thinking about this. I'm like, I have to get an old fashioned alarm clock to put in my bedroom and put next to my bed. Most of the time I wake up without any kind of alarm. But it's so funny if I can't sleep. You know, then it's like, oh, I'll go to Facebook and check my phone or I'll go to the dating sites and check the dating sites <laughs> so, just to be transparent with you all. But, you know, I do that. So it's like, OK, I've got to just take this and put it away and uh, get an old fashioned alarm clock and really focus on that sleep. Yeah. And if you do wake up in the middle of the night, I mean, I I love working in the middle of the night. I find 4 a.m. to be an incredibly productive time for me. So, you know, let yourself enjoy that time. I know that might sound a little weird, but if you can't sleep, like enjoy how quiet it is. Enjoy the space inside of your mind. Spend that time getting to know yourself and, and thinking about what you want for your life and really, you know, gathering your energy to you rather than letting it go all over the place. Yeah, absolutely. And did you hear, and I heard this, uh, I don't know what show I was listening to where I heard this, but I heard that in the olden days, like our great, 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 grandfathers and Loretta, you can let me know if you heard this, but sometimes that they would take, they would do their sleeps in two segments where basically they would have dinner, sleep for four hours, wake up for a couple of hours and then sleep for another four hours. And that they said was like the normal way for a while until then people would start opening up bars and that kind of thing in between those two, four hour sleeps. And then it just kind of diverted the sleep patterns that people were having. So instead of just enjoying that time and having some water or whatever, people were actually getting up and going out. <laughs> so they said then it went to where we were more sleeping six, seven, eight hours in a row. I don't know if you ever heard that. I so hadn't heard that, that but it makes sense. I, I think it's a, if that works for you, I think it's a great way to, to do it. I think it's a, um, yeah, I think it's a great way to do it. And I think the main point, what we're trying to say here is really stop the glorification of busy. Stop this game of overwhelmed uh, poker that everybody's playing, right? Oh, I'm so busy. Oh, really? You think you're so busy? I'm so busy. No, I'm so busy. Like, no one cares. You don't get bonus points for being busy, Right. And I don't think any of us want to get to the end of our days and be like, well, I wouldn't have written, a, I would have written a book, but I was super busy posting on Facebook. Like, let's, let's all write this in the comment section because I love this. This is the golden nugget. So Jana, Loretta, scream this really big. Everybody else, please type it in so that you remember it. But there is no glorification. Or what did you say? There's no glorification. Or take the glorification out of being busy. So Stop take the glorification, glorification out of being busy. And I think mm -hmm. this goes back to having that victim mindset where it's like, oh, we're so busy. I don't have any time. But don't let that be something that you, you know, kind of that you rave about or that you speak over and over and over again, because if you keep speaking it, you're going to keep getting more of it. and You're going to always have this crazy, busy life. So take the glorification out of being busy. I love that. And I'll tell you, you've never seen I kind of enjoy now people's faces when they're like, you know, I hear start hearing this. Oh, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. And people and I'm like, really, I'm not that busy. Like I take a beach walk every day. I have cook dinner with my sweetheart every night. I, you know, get enough sleep. I talk to my friends. Like, 
And they're like, but Sam, you put out like five books and you run these big programs and you have this mid six figure business. How are you not busy? And I'm like, yeah, because I refuse to be busy. I refuse to be busy. I calendar my life. Everything goes on the calendar, including CrossFit, including time with friends, including spiritual time, including go for a walk time, including date night. All that right. stuff goes on the calendar. So I don't have to wait to find time to do the stuff that's important to me. I create the time and I put it in the calendar. And you know how it is when you only have two hours to get something done, you get it done in two hours. Yes, that's right. And, and deadlines. And we should probably talk about this because I think deadlines really help you. Uh, in your book, you talk about a couple of ways to establish some deadlines for yourself that I love. And I've actually got some things on my desk that really give value to your point. But you've got to really have some self-imposed deadlines. Can you share with us some of your thoughts about that? Yeah. So this is something people say to me all the time, like, oh, I'm such a procrastinator. I never get anything done to the last minute. Nobody gets anything done to the last minute. <laughs> that's how we know that it needs to be done is because it's the last minute. Like right. that's how your brain works, right? So deadlines have beauty and magic in them, right? So set deadlines and set some social accountability around the deadlines because you and I both know, like I can promise myself that I'll get something done by Wednesday. But if I tell you, I'll have it to you by Wednesday, oh, you better believe I'm gonna get it to you Tuesday afternoon, right? Like, <laughs> so leverage our sense of social responsibility, right? Um, one strategy I actually learned from my friend, Amy Ehlers, uh, was around a sort of challenging project that I was afraid to do. And she said, I'll tell you what, um, you write out a check for $500 to oh, a, I social I just cause, today. a social political cause with whom you violently disagree. You give me this check. And if you do not show me a first draft by X date, I'm going to mail that check. I was like, oh, that girl doesn't play. <laughs> So did you, so did you meet the deadline? <laughs> you bet I did. I didn't want my name on one of those registers. <laughs> Be awful. So this is good. So she says, you know, if, if there's a, you know, a, a thing you're really trying to get done, write a check, whether it's a hundred bucks, 50 bucks, $500 in this case was Sam's example and tell your friend to send it to a cause that you absolutely despise. And that on a certain date, if your deadline is not met, that check is going to be sent in the mail to that cause and you'll be supporting something you don't believe in. So that's a fantastic example. Yeah. yeah. Um, but really being in a community like this, get a buddy, you know, have a little buddy system. That's always a great way. Um, but really cut yourself some slack. You know, I, I hear this all the time of like, oh no, I've got this big presentation on Monday and I haven't even started. It's like, well, that's not actually true. You've been probably sort of, you know, stewing on it for a while. But by the time you actually sit down, whenever it is Sunday night to do your slides, you kind of know what it is you want to do, right? Right. And, if, and the lesson is different for different people. My sister is one of those people who does her Christmas shopping in August. <laughs> but for her, August is the last minute. Bless her you heart. Know, right? <laughs> She's amazing. Right. Uh, so, uh, and also um, find the ways to do things that you really love in the way you really love to do them. I mean, even if it's something that you really just have no desire to do, you hate doing it, it's a big drag, at least, you know, st first of all, stop waiting to want to do it because it, that's not going to happen. <laughs> You're not going to wake up one morning going, Golly gosh, I want to clean up that garage. Like, it's not going to happen. Now so, I want to unpack those boxes, right? It's right. not going to happen. Don't wait for that. Might, but don't wait for it. Um, but make it as, as wonderful as you can. You know, put on the music that you love. Give yourself a prize for after. Like, okay, if I empty out these three boxes, then I get to call my best friend. Or I get to, you know, go back to bed and read for an hour. Or <laughs> I get to go take a walk in the sunshine or whatever it is. You know, give yourself, bribe yourself, basically. Yeah, like, you, you know, know, for me, it's always like, I want to go to a movie. And then I always say, no, 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 you can't, you can't, you can't. So now it's like making deals with yourself. Like, okay, when you've got this done, then you could go and do that. So almost the same way that we work with children, you do this, here's what you can have happen, but we're not doing it with ourselves. So it just becomes pain, 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 pain. Give yourself exactly. some pleasure. Now, two important things about this. One is exactly like we do with kids, because frankly, your inner nine-year-old is running the show way more than any of us are willing to admit my inner nine-year-old is way more in charge. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also, when you make yourself a promise like that, just like you would to a little kid, make sure you follow through on it. 
because this is where I see a lot of entrepreneurial burnout too, is that people just work themselves to pieces. They never say great job to themselves. They never say, hey, take the afternoon off. They never, I mean, you wouldn't treat a staff member that way. And yet here you are riding yourself 24 seven, like not good enough, not good enough. You're not done, you're not done. Like, no, no, give yourself a bonus, give yourself a raise, let yourself go to the movies. Make, you know, we, we started our own businesses so that we could be in charge and do things our way. So t- be the good grown up, you know? Yes, yeah, absolutely. And, and I love that. I really want everybody to implement this. And if you're using the ref sheet that we've posted for you in the group page, I'm hoping that this will be one of your actionable items where you start setting some goals for yourself in terms of what you want to accomplish and then making a commitment to yourself, how you're going to celebrate. And when you look at your calendar, put in the things that you're going to do that you really, really enjoy, put those puppies in first. And this is something I'm working on too, because it's so easy to put in all those deadlines and the expectations of others, but put in what you really want to do. Go see a movie, go get a massage, go get a massage daily, whatever it might be to to help you form those habits of, all right, now in order to get this massage, I'm going to spend this hour doing this. So I think that's a brilliant strategy. And Sam, you've written, I, I know you at least have two big books out there, right? So start right where you're at and get it done. And where can people get those books at? Wherever fine books are sold, they're online at Amazon, they're at Barnes and Noble, they're at your, probably at your local bookstore. Um, Audible. They're both available on Audible. You can um, you can get the audio versions if you prefer that. So Kindle, hard copies, whatever. So Awesome. They're there. And I want to let everybody know too, you know, we're getting so excited about our Create Your Dream Team experience coming up in fall. I want to encourage you to go get at least one of Sam's books. Get Sam's book. And while you're at it, pick up the Child Care Business Success book as well. And when you get both of those books, both of those books, here's a little cool thing for you. Send the receipt over to my team, support at childcarebusinesssuccess.com. And you are going to get an event ticket. So pick up a copy of Child Care Business Success and get one of Samantha Bennett's books. I don't care. Pick whichever one you'd like to. And you are going to get an event ticket. So all you have to do is send your receipts over to support at Child Care Business Success. And um, I think that will be a really cool value for those of you who want to come out and join us in Boston in the fall. How does that sound, Sam? That's fantastic. What a great prize. Thank you, Julie. (laughs) You're welcome. You're welcome. Well, you've helped me tremendously and you're giving out some great tips and strategies. And I know some, there's some other tools that you use in writing your book. I don't know if you guys could see this. So this is one of them that sits on my desk. I'm going to see if Sam can talk about, I know you mentioned using these tools in your books. I'll let you uh, maybe address that for a moment. I can't see. What are you showing? Can you see that? So it's a timer. This is oh, a yeah. Sam timer. So this is a 30 minute Sam timer that I use and I try to play race the clock. And I know Sam has mentioned this in her book. So I was going to let you talk about the effective uses of timer because, you know, writing book is no easy task and writing books is something that you can totally get stuck in your mind about. Like, is what I'm writing good enough? Is anybody going to care to read this? Uh, do I need to state this a different way? Is my grammar on target? Do I sound like I know what I'm doing? So I'm sure that you've incorporated a bunch of tools to really help you get it done, like taking your 15 minutes. <laughs> um, yeah. But what so the but have you used and how have you used the timers? Yeah, so the timers are great. The timers are a great way to do it. The other thing I love is index cards. <gasps> I love index cards. Oh my God, I, I love find- index cards. I can't wait to hear how you use index cards. Cheap and cheerful and, um, you know, because whole pieces of paper are intimidating. I don't know about you, but whole pieces of paper intimidate me. So um, when I was writing Get It Done, my first book, like I had a lot of ideas, um, but I wasn't really sure what shape the book should take, you know, and I had that thing of like, oh, it has to be perfect inside of my mind before I start. It's crazy. It's a crazy person. Um, so I thought, well, I'll just let the book tell me what it wants to be. So for a couple of weeks, I carried around a big stack of index cards. And anytime I had an idea of something I thought should be in the book, I'd make a little note. And then I would drop it in a little envelope on um, labeled genius, a manila envelope labeled genius. And I would just dump them in there. And after, I don't know, maybe a month of doing that, I poured all the index cards out onto my dining room table and then just started to stack them up. I was like, oh, well, here's all the stuff around time management. And here's all the stuff around managing your insecurities and self-doubt. And here's all the stuff around you know, marketing and getting the word out about your projects. I was like, oh, great. Like all of a sudden the book started to tell me 
what it needed to be and how it wanted to be structured. Uh, and then when I was writing, I would just reach into the thing and pull it out and be like, oh, that's what I'm writing today. It was a lot of fun. That's fantastic. So think about using this for your staff meetings. Think about using this for your one-on-one -on -one meetings with your team members. Think about using this for your parent appreciation celebrations, whatever it might be. But you can totally write down your ideas. And I think the huge mistake that so many of us are making and so many of you are making is that you're carrying a boatload of information around with you inside of your head. And what we need to do is transfer all of that information from our head and experience a weight shifted off our shoulders from our head onto a piece of paper. And if you can use the index card strategies, fantastic. I think that's a great idea. But also, uh, you know, I heard once that Dolly Parton, and I think Dolly Parton is absolutely brilliant. Somebody who I know, well, yeah. Dolly Parton moment worked out to her this morning. But she says that basically she takes a plastic baggie and post-it notes. And I know that this is a big post-it note group. We all love our post-it notes in the childcare industry and creatives probably just love the post-it notes. But she has a plastic baggie and post-its. And she says anytime she has an idea, she writes it down on a post-it notes and puts it inside of her plastic baggie. And then later on, when she has the time to sit down and play the guitar, she starts writing songs or putting lyrics together or just taking all those ideas. And you've really got to start shifting that all that information that you carry with you and put it somewhere. And I'm not talking about putting it in somebody else's ears. I'm not talking about venting. I'm talking about getting it down so that you can constructively do something with it. And I think the important thing here in both my story and in Dolly's story is that it's fine. It's great to write things down, but then they have to have a home. They have to have someplace they go. Right? So they have Absolutely. to go into the plastic bag, they have to go into the manila envelope, they have to go into the, maybe, maybe a recipe card box. So, because to just have more pieces of paper flying around your head is not helping. Exactly, exactly. And I even do a lot of um, recording into my voice recorder on my cell phone. Ideas come at the strangest times. I mean, when you're in the shower, when you're working out, when you're, you know, wherever it might be, looking at the ocean, it's like, oh my goodness, I just got like 20 ideas. And then you forget them. Well, and this is so important. I'm so glad you said this, Julie, because this is such an important thing. You know, when we were talking earlier about how it's actually the opposite, self-care is actually the opposite of selfish, that when you are rested, when you are walked, when you are, you know, um, you know, getting your mellow on in some way, it, it not only feeds your soul, but it does your quiet for a second. So your brain does give you good ideas. It does say, oh, here's how to solve that problem. Like, and I always feel like my brain is going, oh, for God's sake, she, shut, she finally shut up for a second. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the solution here. You know, oh, look, she's got a moment. She's looking at the ocean. She's in line at the movies. She's doing dishes. She's like, it's quiet for a second. And that's where you get those real game changing ideas that can really double and triple your income, can really double and triple your impact, can really 10x your life all over the place. I agree. But you can't I do it if you run around like a crazy person all the time. Yeah. And I think we know a lot of what we need to implement, but it's just that we don't get quiet so we can hear the good ideas flowing through. I think that's, that's brilliant. So I want you all to make sure you write that down as well Is that you've got to find ways to quiet your mind so that your brilliance can really be elevated to the top of the mental speak or the mental stuff that your mind is, is uh, feeding you all the time. Um, and if you have questions for Sam or for myself, go ahead and write them in the comment section. If we don't have time to address them while we're on this live broadcast, we will come back and I'll ask Sam to as well to address your questions or just to say hello. So if you do have a question or a comment, if you feel this is benefiting you, remember we've got, oh, and there's the kitty cat. Oh, <laughs> my mind, mine's locked away. <laughs> she's, she's jumped on my head occasionally, but she's a really good cat. <laughs> What's your cat's name, Sam? That's Chester. Cooper's hiding. <laughs> oh, Chester, sweetheart. Uh, but if you do have questions, have a comment, please go ahead and listen. And remember, you have the opportunity to win the yummiest brownies on the planet for the most engagement in our group this evening. Also, make sure you go to the Child Care Business Success Group if you're not yet a member and get a copy of the reference sheet. And Sam was talking about deadlines. Well, I knew the show was coming up, so it was like an hour and a half before showtime. I was doing my reference sheet which I've been thinking about doing for you for a week now. So <laughs> it waited till an hour and a half before showtime, but it's done and it's there and it's waiting for you. So one That's of the it. strategies, Sam, that I read in your book has to do with, oh, wait a second. You guys know what this is? Let me see here. 
look at this. It is a, gotta go to a blank page. <laughs> okay, so anybody recognize this? If I can get it in my, I think I've got my camera like set on a high zoom or something. I'm gonna have to check on that. So, but this is your calendar. And a lot of times we look at our calendar and we start putting things in our calendar of all these things we have to do. And in your book, Sam, uh, Get It Done, you recommended working things backwards. Working things backwards to help you get out of being late, to help you really step up your game when it comes to the commitments that you make to yourself. And I love this strategy. And I haven't heard this strategy before in my 30 years of studying this stuff. And I said, that is brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. So instead of looking at, okay, here's my day. It's like you, you put down your, your commitments. I'm going to let Sam share this. But then you work backwards. Sam, tell us about it. Yeah, so this is just, it's just simple reverse engineering, but it is a game changer and it's how I literally live my life. So if Julie and I are gonna have lunch at one, I'll, I'll write down 1 p.m. lunch with Julie. 12.45, park. 12.15, leave the house. Um, 12, get my stuff together. Uh, 11, shower and dress. 10, do stuff so that I can get, make sure I get out of the house in time, for tea, right? So I'll just work backwards. And what this does is it, first of all, it means I'm never late for anything because I've always allowed enough time, you know, for everything to happen. And it especially allows me to um, remember stuff I might otherwise forget, like, oh, I should type, I should print out the map. You know, I should look up where that restaurant is that Julie and I are meeting, or I should, you know, oh, that's right. I told her I would bring her a copy of XYZ. I need to print that out ahead of time. So I'm not remembering that as I'm getting in the car, I'm remembering it in time to do something about it. Um, and I'm also accommodating all that little buffer zone time. Cause I think a lot of the time we think, oh yeah, I'm gonna meet her at that restaurant, but it's only 20 minutes away. So I just need, it's like, yeah, the drive is 20 minutes. But it takes you five minutes to go from where's my purse, where's my keys, kitty, get back inside, you know, into the car to drive away. And then once you get there, it takes you another five minutes to lock the car, go to the thing, get in the elevator, go upstairs, right? So you build in that buffer zone and then you're never late for anything. And in fact, you're often early. And sometimes you even get 15 minutes to sit in your car and do a little work around whatever it is you're working on, a little found time, which is a very beautiful thing. And I love this because there is so much that we do not account for when it comes to things that need to be in our schedule. So the preparation time, the driving time, it's true. You know, to look up the address, to plug that into your GPS, to make sure GPS can recognize what city you're going to. There's right? so much. And I don't know about other creatives like myself, but our minds can be a little, I don't know if ADD is the, the, you know, the right term to use where it's like, I'm over here, I'm over here, I'm over here, I'm over here. So really allow in your schedule all the time for everything you need to do up until that moment. So before the child care business success show goes on at six o'clock on Mondays, now I'm looking at the calendar backwards. Okay, get my lighting set up, get this, my hair, makeup, whatever it might be, and working it backwards so that I know I'm really starting by four o'clock to get ready for a 6 p.m. launch of the show. And it's a great way to look at it. So think about if you have candidates coming in for a job interview, what do you have to do so that you can show up in the best way possible? What are all the things you have to do right before that point or a difficult confrontation or a conversation with a parent or, um, you know, maybe meeting with somebody about marketing in your center or a partnership. So what are all the different things? But I love the idea of getting the firm commitment down and then backing it up so that you have that buffer in place for everything you need to do. I think it's just so brilliant. And I do it with big projects too, right? So if I'm going to launch a program, uh, you know, at the end of, August, you know, then, you know, here's the first day of the class. And then here's the day before I'm going to send out the email that says last chance. And the day before that, I'm going to send out a, you know, special interview with somebody. And, you know, two weeks before that, and three weeks before that, and 10 weeks before that. Um, and I build in catch up days, right? And I try to have all those little things be just 15 minute tasks. So, you know, check the database, you know, um, uh, proofread the letter, have somebody else proofread the offer, you know, do the math on whatever it is. So I work backwards through my calendar. So if I'm going to launch something, you know, if I'm going to do some Christmas marketing, if I'm going to do some holiday marketing, I might be starting now. 
and doing just like 15 minutes every couple of days to reverse engineer up to that big launch in the, in the, in the, at Christmas. That's fantastic. And I think that in itself, for those of you who are watching, if you love that strategy, let us know that you love that one and you're going to put it to work because that was personally one of my favorites. That was one. Another one. Uh, and, and I'll share this one and then we'll look at some comments and see if there's questions here. So if you've got questions, comments, please go ahead and share them with us and we'll read those before we wrap up the show in just a few moments. But another strategy that I think is so critically important, and I remember hearing this actually from, um, from Juliet Childs, and she said, have a place for everything. And years ago, I heard her story about her and her husband before the movie was even out. And she said that he took all of her pots and pans and he drew outlines on the walls so that every single pot or utensil that she took, after it was cleaned, she knew right where to put it back. And I think if you take that thought process out of trying to figure it out, it makes a difference. And you talk about this in your book. How can we put this to work just in our daily business lives, Sam? Yeah. So here's the phrase that helped me so much. Everything needs the right sized home. Everything needs the right sized home. So that means there's nothing that doesn't have a home. Everything in your life has a home, or a place where it belongs. And I love thinking of it as its home. Like this, like this, and I do this. This works really well actually with um, maybe some of you have spouses or partners who leave wet towels on the floor or leave dirty dishes out. No, and, nobody does. <laughs> no, but it's probably just me. It's probably just me. Um, but I'm telling you, this worked so well. I started to say to Luke, oh honey, that wet towel is very sad being there on the floor. That wet towel doesn't want to be there. It wants to be home, hanging over the towel rack so it can dry and be fresh for tomorrow. <laughs> does it sound like I talk to Luke like he's five? I do sometimes. I do. <laughs> And it works, right? That's the idea of like, the oh, that is sad. The towel needs a home. Right, the towel wants to be in its home. So, and the right sized home, right? I was working with some friends one time. They asked me to come over and help them, you know, organize their lives, which people ask me to do occasionally. And um, she had a lot of cookbooks, but she had, so she had a little bookcase in the kitchen, but then there were some up on the shelf above the thing. And then there was a stack over here. And I'm like, no, no, all the cookbooks need to live together. And so we need to find one place that is big enough for all the cookbooks. And once she got them all stacked up, she realized that a good third of them could go away. She wasn't really using them. They'd been gifts or she didn't care about them. So then they all fit in that one bookshelf. I'm like, great. Now you have, now all the cookbooks have a home. They live here. If you get more cookbooks in, then something either has to go or you need to get them, get them a different home. Right? So this is how we start to know, oh, you know, when the newspaper recycling gets filled to here, it needs to go to its other home in the recycling bin. <laughs> yes. So it's about everything having a place and the right size place. And Sam talks about this in her book too, where she talks about really letting things go. And I know Loretta, our chief of happiness, she moved into one of the tiny homes. So she's got a tiny home and she totally let go of things. So if you want to know any of Loretta's strategies, make sure you talk to her in the comments. But uh, but she we will have to interview you sometime, Loretta, about this because she moved from, you know, big place to like a tiny home. Sam, what's the biggest piece of advice you can give to people who are collectors of stuff? And personally, yeah. I get really depressed or I feel so unproductive if I know something is broken and it's not working, I'm not really good at keeping it anymore. But I've been with people, lived with people where it's like, oh, there's that broken thing for six months. And it just really becomes like a drain on my energy. Yeah. The Chinese say that health is flow, right? Health is flow. We want the air to flow in and out of our lungs. We want food to flow in and out of our body. We want money to flow in and out of our lives, right? Um, we want love to flow. So anytime something is stuck or piled or broken or not in use, it's it's stuck energy and, and we can feel it dragging us down. You can feel the stuckness of it. Um, so the simple way I think to, to declutter is to ask yourself, do I use it? Which is generally pretty self-evident. Like, yes, I use it. I, <laughs> it's the thing I use. Uh, or do I love it? Now, this one's tricky because it's got to be actual love. Do I love the actual thing, which is different than loving the person who gave it to you or <laughs> loving what it reminds you of 
or loving the size you were when you bought it, those are different things. And if you don't love the actual- I, 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 gotta, I gotta stop you there because I love this point that you just made is that if you let go of something somebody gave to you, it doesn't mean you're letting go of that person. It doesn't mean you don't love that person because there is such an emotional attachment to things because of the story or the person behind it. Of course. So that is so a I, fantastic point. I love that. So, and I'm a super sentimental person. I, I, I get caught up in this all the time. So I have two strategies for things. Um, one is take a picture of it. Aww. So you remember like, oh, there's that horrible vase that my aunt gave me. <laughs> right? So <laughs> then you have the memory of the thing without the actual thing taking up space in your life. Um, but also, you know, when I was getting rid of some of my grandmother's china and I felt terrible about it, it was such beautiful china. But, you know, I was moving into this tiny place by the beach and like, what, I'm going to suddenly start having sit down dinners for 12? Like, it's not going to happen. And so what I finally did was I imagined her standing next to me. I imagined her with me and I sort of talked to her about it. And my grandmother was such a no nonsense person. She was like, the, in my imagination, you know, she was like, oh, Samantha, please like can I, get rid of them. <laughs> Let them go to somebody who's going to use them. Like live your life, be happy. <laughs> and it was so great to sort of feel like I had her, her blessing. So, um, so that may work for you too, to, to, if, especially if it's somebody who's, who's not with us anymore to imagine them being there. And um, I remember one time thinking, imagining her saying, Hey, you know, everybody gives a dud gift every once in a while. Like, <laughs> Like you have plenty of things that I gave you that you loved and have kept. That's so you don't wear that thing. Get rid of it. Like it's fine. That I got chills listening to you to listening to you share that story because I think about all the things that my grandma would give us. You know, <laughs> things we either appreciated, didn't appreciate, or now appreciate that she's gone. But it's so true. You know, because it was so important to that person, it doesn't mean that it has to be that important to us in our life. And it's not a reflection of how much we love that person. It's it's something that they had. And especially imagining her, you know, on the other side of heaven, you know, filled with divine light, just being like, oh, please. <laughs> it's just a thing. Let it go. Let it go. All right. Ooh, well, this has been some good stuff. I'm going to see what comments we have before we bring Loretta on to announce our prize winners. Let me go ahead. I'm going to hide this. All right. So let's see if I've got... And if you have questions or comments, go ahead and now is a great time. And remember, Loretta's monitoring and she's going to come on in just a couple moments and tell us who our brownie winner is. Here, let's see. Tutor time. This is Karen, I believe. She says, if I don't write it down, it doesn't happen. Yes. I, and I know, sister. Yeah. So many things here, too. And I love index cards. And I, I preach so much and teach so much about what to do with index cards. But now Samantha Bennett has given us a whole new idea of what to do with those index cards. And think about not only implementing this for yourself in your life. Think about teaching it to your staff, too. Index cards, organizing your thoughts, getting them written down and categorized. It's amazing. All right. So let's see. Cheryl. Cheryl Nicholson says... Um, the biggest lie I tell myself, I might have to put on my glasses. <laughs> I don't need to write that down. I'll remember it. Isn't that true? Oh, and this is so true. It's like even creative ideas. It's like, it comes to me in the shower and then I'm like, Oh, I'll remember that. And then it's gone. And I'm like, crap, that was so good. <laughs> that was so good. All right. Yep. And here's some repeats. Got to find ways to quiet your minds. The brilliant can come to the top. The brilliance can come to the top. Yes, Loretta. Great. All right. Tutor time, tutor time. I have different sizes depending upon what I need. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Tutor time. <laughs> My life is filled with index cards and post-it notes. As it should be. As it should be. <laughs> they should really be one of our sponsors. <laughs> All right, let's see. All right, here's from Jennifer. Jennifer says, I need to stay focused on only what I can do, not the 50 other things someone else on the team can do. Easily distracted is my middle name. Great. Well, Jennifer, I hope you found some great tips so that we can change your middle name to, I don't know, maybe like Sam's book, Get It Done. <laughs> That'd be a better middle name, I think. All right. Paulette, let's see what she has to say. Next slip. Netflix binge watching has me in a bad rut. 
Wish it could be like uh, like before. One favorite show a week, and you have to wait the, till the following week. All right, yeah, because media makes it so easily accessible to us just to sit there and binge watch everything. But I this is where you have to be the good grown up, Paulette. You have to say to yourself, no, no, we're going to save it for next week and like have something else better to do afterwards. It's kind of like not eating the whole candy bar, Sam. That's exactly right. <laughs> and you notice like one is sweet, two is kind of not that great. And by the time you get to three or four, you're like, I don't even know what the show is anymore. Like, <laughs> Exactly. So Christine says, you've given me some great ideas. Awesome, Christine. Glad that you're here with us. Uh, let's see. Karen. Oh, yes. Yes. My favorite saying, take the glorification out of being busy. Very wise. Absolutely. All right. I hope Sam's mic cleared up too. And I'm not sure if that was on my end. All right. And I think that's about, let's see if we got any news. All right. I don't see anything else new coming through. So Loretta, Loretta's waiting for us in our lobby. Do we have a winner to announce? Yes, she does. All right. So Sam, if you'll hang on with us for a moment, I'm going to have Loretta be up here with us. So I'm going to call her into our lobby. Sure. Then we'll have three of us and see how that is. I have to figure out how to move so I could be on screen. Okay, there we go. Hey, Loretta. Hey. How was our show tonight? It was awesome. I love the interaction and the engagement. It makes it really challenging for me, but you know I love a good challenge. <laughs> it's just fun. And was Sam coming across clearly? Could you hear her okay? It was, it was a little echoey right at first, and then it cleared up, and after that, it was perfect. Great. And I think we got some good gold, golden nuggets out there, huh? A lot of them. I was having fun retyping them. That's the way that I remember things. <laughs> if, it, if I don't write it down, it never happens. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I know that you have an important role, which is to give out some of the yummiest brownies in the world. So do we have a winner uh, as to who gets our engagement prize for this evening? We, we do. I kept a little tally this time. I was trying to do a better job of really seeing who was most engaged. <laughs> We've got a lot of engagement, but our winner tonight, drum roll everyone, is Christine Devana. Christine Devana. Woohoo! <laughs> Congratulations. You're going to get some of the yummiest brownies in the world. And if we don't have your address, please make sure you shoot it over to support at childcarebusinesssuccess.com. Or Loretta might be uh, tagging you down later to say, okay, I need to send you some brownies. Where are you located? So you can get those to the I'll right find place. You. What's that? I'll find you. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so Loretta, let me ask you, what, what was your biggest takeaway? And I know that you have downsized into your tiny home. Wait, did you have one big takeaway from this evening? I, I love quotes. So all of the golden nuggets are fantastic and I will use all of them. But I think um, just reminding myself to take time for me before I do everything else, because there will always be people or projects or things to be done and accomplished. And I I'm great at multitasking, but if I don't take the time for me, it's more like spreading dirt on a counter rather than actually cleaning things up and making progress. Spreading dirt on a counter. <laughs> you know, I've never tried to like wipe something up and it just, it's like flour or something and you use a wet sponge and it just makes it gooey and gross. <laughs> if you do it the right way, it works. You just That's have right. to do it the right way. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us. And thank you for revealing who our winner is. And uh, I'm thrilled that you're here. And Loretta, you'll get to know her in our community group. So if you're not part of our community yet, please make sure you come and join the group. I know John is going to be posting that link for you, but come be part of our group. We've got an international community and the group really allows us just to wrap our arms around you a little bit tighter than we can on a business page. So come and be part of the group, grab your free reference sheet. And oh, if I could get in the camera. Anyway, Donna posted it there for you. So grab that. It'll help you keep track of who our guest was, more information that you want, um, your aha moments, and your actionable items so that you could actually grow as you watch the Child Care Business Success Show. So thanks, Loretta. You're very welcome. All right. I want to put you back down. All right. Well, Sam, is there anything that you would like to say in closing? Um. Just, I think what, what somebody mentioned in the chat is really important. The, the work that only you can do, you must do. And the work that somebody else can do, 
someone else must do. The world needs your art. The world needs your creativity. It needs your good work. It needs your brilliant ideas. It does not need you fiddling around with the 99% of things that don't matter. Like going to the store and getting groceries or plunging the toilet or getting toilet paper. Um, and I could go on with list and list and list, but you guys know what these things are and you know that this is not your area of brilliance when it comes to leading your childcare team and to creating a successful childcare business. So this is a really important point. So Sam, let's tell everybody uh, your book titles and I'm gonna tell them what the offer is on the table again. So Sam's <laughs> books that you can grab on Amazon or Audible or in any bookstore even. Right. So there's Get It Done, From Procrastination to Creative Genius in 15 Minutes a Day. And then there's Start Right Where You Are, How Little Changes Can Make a Big Difference for Overwhelmed Procrastinators, Frustrated Overachievers, and Recovering Perfectionists. <laughs> Love it. So if you go and grab one of Sam's books, I don't care which one, and you grab a copy of the Child Care Business Success book, send your receipts over to support at childcarebusinesssuccess.com, and you're going to get a free event ticket to come out and play with us at the Create Your Dream Team Experience, uh, which I am so incredibly excited about. We had so much fun at the first one that we did, and I can't wait to have it again in the fall. So Sam, let me ask you, you've worked with uh, on different TV shows with different actors, who is that person that you energetically really want to spend more time with if you could? Um, gosh, there's so many great people. I mean, Ed O'Neill is actually one of my closest friends. Um, and I love hanging out with Ed. He's so smart and he's so funny. He's got so many great stories and, and he's taught me so much about, uh, about negotiating about celebrity, about power, about um, working with people, especially difficult personalities and how to kind of manage them. Uh, he's, I, I gotta give a big thumbs up to my friend, Ed. Oh, that's very sweet. Awesome, Ed O'Neill. Mm. That's cool, see? So we've got, you know, what one degree removed here from all the celebrities and you'll see Sam. Sam's been on several shows. So make sure that you uh, Google her. And I think there's some clips on YouTube of you in shows, right? Probably. I don't know. But don't go to IMDb because they've had the wrong picture of me forever. And I keep telling them that's not me. And then my ex-husband's profile is somehow conflated with mine. We got to fix it. So anyway. So anyways, look at the books. <laughs> look at the books. Get the books go for sure. The books so that we can get you out of overwhelm, so that you stop procrastinating, and so that you really start accomplishing the things that you want to accomplish. Sam Bennett, I am just so honored that you are a friend of mine and that I could call you a friend and that um, you have been there for me. And I so appreciate you coming on the Child Care Business Success Show and sharing your wisdom and your expertise and your personality and who you are with us. I, I so appreciate that. Oh, Julie, it's my pleasure. I love you. I love what you're up to. I love the work that you do. And I love that how incredibly... Um, tenacious you have been with your dream like you just never say die and it's such an inspiration i just love that about you oh thank you so much sam bennett thank you and i'll put you down and i'll just uh, go ahead and close out for everybody else but i love you too and thank you for being here all right. Well, that wraps up another episode of the Child Care Business Success Show. I promise you in the future, I am going to get these shows down to 60 minutes. <laughs> but I always feel like there's so much good information. How do I stop? Because quite honestly, with my friend, Samantha Bennett, I could have talked for another hour, another two hours, just giving you information. Sam probably would have said, hey, I got to go. Uh, but there's just so much information. I hope you found at least one or two or three actionable items that you could put into place to help your life grow personally and professionally. And and I so appreciate you being here this evening. Remember, come join the Child Care Business Success Group. And if you are in need of a total team transformation, make sure you check out the Total Team Transformation System, which is our entry-level coaching program. And John will drop that link for you. But if you really want to get started on the journey of transforming your team and creating your dreamy life personally and professionally, please come and be part of that system. And if you can't find information anywhere else, just go ahead and send us a private message and we'll get you the information that you need. I'm Julie Barkas, uh, the host of the Child Care Business Success Show, your workplace transformationalist and best-selling author of Child Care Business Success. And I'll be seeing you in future videos and most definitely back next week for another episode of the Child Care Business Success Show. 
Whether you're tuning in live or to the replay, please leave your comments for us, your questions. Let us know if you like this, love this, share this out so that we can help child care professionals all around the world with the crazy, amazing information that we're bringing to you. I'm Julie Barkas. We'll see you soon. Bye, everyone.